This is Hank. Hank, say hi to everybody. Today we're going to roast one of Hank's sisters. Uh. Oddly enough, I feel the same way when I watch the news more than 15 minutes of these days. Anyway, onward. So why roast chicken, you ask? Roast chicken is one of those foundational culinary techniques that you should have down pat. It's not dissimilar to when we work on our squat or deadlift trying to get that technique down pat. It's something you should have in your culinary arsenal. Fortunately, it's easy to do, and it doesn't take that much time. And it is a springboard for a lot of other things that we can make that are awesome. So, let me show you. Meet Gallus Gallus Domesticus, the domestic chicken. This is the one that you'll find commonly in supermarkets. It's a Cornish cross. They're bred to have large breasts, and they grow very fast. Uh, usually, typically within 45 to 60 days, I've read. Now, two things to keep in mind. One, this is going to be a different chicken than you find, say, in a farmer's market or you get from a farm. Those are heirloom varieties, and they're a little bit leaner, and they're a little slower growing. And that means they're tastier. These are a little bit more bland because they grow so fast. And so it's good to have salt and pepper to season them up a little bit. Another thing to note is that you want to have everything laid out that you need because you're going to be handling raw chicken. You notice I've gloved up. You don't have to do this. This is just something I prefer to do. Uh, I've got my roasting rack set up here. I've got my butcher twine about six feet cut. I've got a pair of poultry shears sitting here. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to truss this in a very basic way. I'm going to go underneath the legs here. I'm going to go over them and under in a figure eight. I'm going to draw those closed. And I'm going to go up top, and I'm going to do a butcher's, butcher's knot, or also known as a sur uh, surgeon's knot, pardon me. You go over it once, you go over it twice, you go over it three times, and then draw it tight. And flip the chicken over, and then bring the twine towards you like this, okay? Now what you're going to do is you're going to tie it right underneath the neck right there. And it's the same knot. Once. Twice. And three times. There, you see how that tightened up like that? And then just cut it. We're going to season it up with a little bit of salt and pepper. I've already got this pre-ground. This is diamond crystal kosher salt too. And you don't have to be crazy with this, just rub it in a little bit. At this point it would be good if you were to put the chicken in the fridge and let it dry out overnight. Or at least for a few hours. The skin will dry out, it'll make the skin a little bit more crispy, it'll give salt time to penetrate into the meat. But you don't have to do that. You can pour a little bit into the cavity as well if you like. You don't have to. And then what I do is just set it on your roasting rack, back side up, because that's where you're going to start it. It goes into a 400 degree oven for 15 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes is up. Well, I should say 20 minutes, rather. Um, on a larger bird, Ordinarily, they run three to four pounds, but on a larger bird like this one, it's good to extend out this to about 20 minutes. The reason you do this is because it gives a jump start on cooking the underside of the chicken down here where the thighs are. Those are often problem areas when you're roasting a chicken that don't get done as fast as the breast does because the meat's always exposed up. This is called the sizzle, and you'll see this a lot with roasting. Uh, so like I said, on an ordinary bird, three to four pounds, you're going to do about 15 minutes. This one's a little bit larger, so I extend it out to 20 minutes. So what you want to do is just take a couple paper towels, flip him over, try not to burn yourself, and then it's going to go back in the 400 degree oven for about another 15, 20 minutes. After that amount of time have expired, lower the temperature to 350 and then set it for about an hour. I'm going to go ahead and add a probe thermometer now because then you can roast it until it hits about 165 and we will be back in an hour. Okay, the chicken has come out of the oven. It has been rested for about 30 minutes. 
The total cook time was about an hour and 40 minutes. It went just a bit over till I hit about 168 in different parts of it. Now here was something that I didn't show you earlier. About 10 minutes before the chicken is done, one thing I like to do is I like to take a couple of forks, I take it out, and then I tilt it up on end like this to let a lot of the juices that collect in the cavity in here run out. Because when you cook a chicken or a roasted chicken with this method, there's juices and blood and things that collect in the body cavity here and they'll sit in there even when you carve it. So it's good to, you don't have to do this, but it's good to take it and drain that out and then it just collects in the bottom of the pan here and it cooks through and it just gives you a lot less chance of any kind of cross-contamination. So now we're going to just carve into this really quick. So let me true my knife up here. This is a Victorinox uh, boning knife. I'll put a link to that somewhere. And then you can just cut through and take off that string, just like that. So first thing I like to do is get a hold of that right there and just separate it out. The joint will just pop. And do the same thing on the other side. Let gravity do some of the work here. Look, it's just falling apart tender. It's a little warm, actually. There we go. that. As far as the breasts, just go down on either side of this breastbone that sits right here. It just goes right down the middle. Now the wishbone is still in here. There's some celebrity chefs like Jacques Pepin that like to take this wishbone out before they cook the, uh, before they cook the chicken. I don't really see a need to. Um, I suppose it does aid in carving, but you don't have to be quite so Worried about the way it looks. There we go. And then the same thing on this side. Just follow it down. Just take your time. And just slice through it and it comes away clean just like that. Then you can get some more off of that if you like. The oysters are on the back. That's something I'll show you at another time. You can slice through here. I made a murder on the skin on this one. Look at those. You'll be able to feel it with your knife where that joint sits. And then these, just slice through the skin like this. And there you go. Well, I didn't do the prettiest job of it, but you get the idea. Now, this carcass is gold, because from this we can make stock, but that's going to be another video. So I hope this uh, helps you understand how to truss a chicken and how to basically roast it. It's really simple. You just tie the legs together, tie it around the front underneath the neck using the surgeon knot that I so badly showed you. Roast it, uh, you do the sizzle where you put it on its breast. You cook it at 400 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes, flip it over, do another 15 to 20 minutes of 400 and turn it down to 350 for about an hour or until it reaches about 165 or 168 in both the breast and the thigh. And then rest it for 30 minutes and that is very important. Make sure you rest it before you carve into it. Really simple. Hit that like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.